In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the normal blog page where you have this style and design for each of the different blog posts for your visitor to click through to. And we're going to create a completely customized design for each of these items. And this one is a more basic example where we're pulling in the image, the feature image for the particular post. And then we're displaying the title of that post and the visitor can click anywhere in this whole item to click through to that blog post. This is very easy to do and it will require the pro version of the Cadence theme as well as the pro version of Cadence blocks. So let's get started. First, you're going to need to make sure that the elements feature is enabled. So I'm going to go to appearance, click right here where it says Cadence. I'll scroll down and right here where it says hooked elements, we need to make sure that this option is toggled on. You will have this menu item here if that is toggled on. So let's go ahead and click on into it next where it says add new, we'll click on that. And then it's going to give us these four options. We're gonna choose the one right here that says template and we'll go ahead and click on that. So what we're going to be designing is a single item, a single item like this. We're not gonna be creating a grid or anything like that. We're gonna put the design together for a single item. And then for all of these additional items, it's going to dynamically use the featured image of the post that it's associated with, as well as the title. And so we're really just gonna be designing one that's gonna be carried over across all of these. So let's first give this a name. I've chosen to name it the blog archive item. However, the name is not that important. Next, let's look at the settings for elements. And I'm gonna click this icon here on the top right, and it's going to reveal some options. So the first thing that I want to do is click right here where it says preview settings. So when I start designing it, it's going to use the full width that you can see here of my browser window, which I actually don't want because when you look at the item, this right here, you can see it doesn't take up the full width. It really only takes up a third based on how I have this page configured. So this is probably maybe 400 pixels wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that value. Right here it says editor width. I'll go ahead and enter 400. It's probably closer to 350. This only affects this preview area as we're designing it. So we want to have this preview area look very close to what it's gonna look like on our website, on our blog page. Great, now I'm gonna click right here where it says close. And you can see I have a much more narrow width area here. And second, where it says placement, we're gonna click on this drop down arrow and we're gonna choose this option right here that says replace archive loop item content, just like that. Next, we wanna choose our display settings. I'll click on this and show on, I want this to show on the blog page and you can see the options right here for blog page. I'll choose that. And then where it says user settings, I'm going to choose this for all users. Great, now that this is all done, let's start designing what that item will look like. First, I'm going to add the row block. So I will click on the plus, I'll start typing row, and you can see it's right here. I'll just select it. And this row is gonna be just one column, obviously. So I'll choose one right here. And then I want to put the title in. So I'm gonna click on the plus right here, and I'm gonna choose the advanced heading option. It's already pulling up for me. Now to get the title to dynamically pull in, we're gonna use Cadence Blocks dynamic content feature. There's a link to a full video tutorial on this in the video description. Essentially, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this icon right here, and you can see the text pops up that says dynamic content. So I'm gonna click on that. And then for the content, I'll expand these options and I want to show the post title. So I'll choose that. 
and current post is fine. I'm gonna click right here where it says add dynamic content. And here we have our title. Now keep in mind, this pulls in dynamically. So it's going to change and pull in the title of each post that someone can click through to. So now I'm gonna click on publish and I'll click on publish again. And let's take a look at what this looks like. Obviously there's a little bit more styling work that needs to be done. So here I am on the blog page and you can see it's showing the titles, which is fine, but it's not using a link. It's not showing the background image. The font's probably a little larger than I would like it. And I know I'm gonna have to change the color of the font. So let's go ahead and add all these style options right now. What I wanna encourage you to do is pull up what's called list view. And it's this icon right here with these three lines. And when you click on it, this is gonna give us a visual representation of everything that is inside of our design. So first let's click right here where it says row layout. And then over here, we're gonna get rid of these options and click on the settings wheel and it's gonna show us the row settings. So let's start designing this. First, I'm gonna go ahead and for background settings, I'll click there. I wanna make the background image the featured image inside of that blog post. So I have it on image by default. I just need to click right here, this same dynamic icon. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna to toggle it on. And then for the background image, I'm going to choose the featured image right there. And there we have it. So I've got the image and that is looking good. So let's continue on and take a look at the different options uh, that we have here. So I want to put a, an overlay color over this image so that all the images kind of have a similar look. And that's right here under background overlay settings. So for the color, I'll select this and I'm gonna choose the primary color I have designed on this site. And you can see it just gives it a little bit nicer of a look there. Perfect. Now for the border settings, I'm gonna expand that. And for this, I wanna give a border radius on these images to kind of soften it up. So I'm gonna enter the value of 10 and there you have it. It just looks a little softer. Next, I'm gonna to go to where it says text color settings and the text color I want to make uh, white. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna choose white. This simply means any text inside of this row will have this color. All right, so next I'm gonna go down here to the structure settings and it says right here, minimum height. I wanna have a minimum height for all of these items. So I'm thinking, let's see what, um, uh, 350 looks like. Actually, I like the way 350 looks. So that means regardless of the height of the text, the box itself will be 350 pixels tall. And you can change that based upon the device to make this look perfect on every single device. So next I want to change the centering for the height. So this is gonna be an option inside of this toolbar. And you can see it's right here. It says the vertical alignment. And when I click on it, I can change it to a align middle. There we go, that looks good. Next, I want to format this text a little bit. I wanna make it smaller and I want to center it. So I'm gonna click on it and that selects the advanced heading options right here, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm gonna have this be an H2 tag and for the text alignment, I'll go ahead and center it. And then for the font size, I'm gonna lower this. So let's try, let's see, 26. That looks a little small, 28, eh, 28 looks, Okay, um, maybe let's go with a 30. You can make this whatever you want. Okay, 30 looks good. Let's go ahead and click on update and see how it looks on the front end. So this is what we had before. I'm gonna click on refresh and you can see it's already looking really good, but I can't click. When I click on it, it's not taking me to that post. Let me show you what we're gonna do about that to make this entire card that you see here, this entire art item clickable. All right, so we're back here. And with list view open, I want you to click where it says section. So I'm gonna click on that. And that is basically this entire area right here. There's an option here that says overlay link. 
Let's go ahead and click on that. And here's our dynamic icon again. So I'm going to click on that. Let's enable dynamic link and the link. Let's expand this. It's going to be the post URL. Uh, there we go. Now I'm going to click on update and now let's check the front end. OK, so you can see no link and I'm going to do a refresh and now I can click anywhere in this entire item and it will take me through to the post just like that. And you can see it works for all of them. Here's the five do's and don'ts and I click through and I'm now on that post and take a look at the featured image for this post. You can see it happens to be the same image that is being used here. Now you can add any bit of dynamic content that you want here. So if you wanted a little bit of text here that says read more, well, that would be very easy to do. Let me quickly show you how to do that. I'm going to add a new block and I'm going to use the advanced heading block again. And for the text, I'm going to enter read more read more like that and for styling uh, this this uh, text i'll choose the paragraph font size right here i'm going to center it and i think it's fine the way that it is it looks good let's go ahead and click on update and see how it looks on the front all right, here it is. I'll do a quick refresh. And now it says read more. And I didn't add a link to where it says three, read more because the entire card is clickable. So you can add any of the cadence blocks into this item. You can add custom field information. You could add a button. There's really no limit to what you could put in there. If you wanted to add something called meta information, that's also really easy to do. Why don't we do that right now? So I'm going to click on where it says read more and I don't want that anymore. I'm going to put the author's name. So if it's a multi author blog, so I'm going to type by just like that. And then I am going to to add the name of the author and I'm going to have that be dynamic content. So I'm going to choose the dynamic item like this. And for the content, I'm going to choose the author's name. So as I scroll through here, there it is, the author's display name. That's fine. Just like that. And click on add dynamic content. And there it is. So now when I click on updates and we go to the front of the site and do a refresh, now it's going to show the author's name. Pretty cool, huh? What's also interesting is you can continue adding bits of text to this same heading. So I put by and then the author name. I can go there and I can type posted on and then I can add a, another piece of dynamic content. So I'm going to choose the dynamic icon again for content. This time I'm going to choose the post date or you can even do the last modified date. It's up to you. I'll just do post date, click on add dynamic content and there it is. So now when I update it and take a look on the site, you can see I have one advanced heading block, but I'm able to display multiple pieces of dynamic content. There really is no limit on how you can design these. You could make it look however you want and you can pull in values from custom fields. And this goes beyond just blog post archives like this. Any type of archive on your website, you can create custom looks and feels that match the brand of your website. So while I do like the default look right here, now there's no limit to what you can create when you use the Cadence theme with Cadence blocks. Now, if you don't have the pro version of both of these, there's a bundle available on the website. There'll be a link in the video description box down below. We'd love to have you as a customer. Thanks for watching this video. If you appreciate training like this, give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video.